Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. In Welcome back to New Community, Trinity Grace. Uh, this past week, uh, we are continuing on in our Savior King series, and we are still in the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus uh, began teaching on prayer. Well, that's the passage for tonight, Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 to 15. Uh, and I began the sermon uh, by asking how we approach our Christianity. Uh, and, and more specifically, do we approach our Christianity as a relationship, a personal relationship with God? Um, and the reason why I started out that way was to get ourselves in the mindset uh, to create a context for prayer. Um, God certainly loves the prayers of his people uh, because he wants a personal relationship with his people, uh, both corporately as a church, but with every individual as well. It's a both and. And uh, the summary uh, of the passage and the sermon that I offered, uh, as I usually do as a prayer, uh, was a beautiful irony that um, a prayer about prayer and the prayer was this uh, Lord may prayer nurture in me your affection for me and my affection for you in return uh, we love because we are first loved we love God and others uh, because God has first loved us that is the wonderful dynamic of the gospel and of grace uh, and it, it's meant to be nurtured one beautiful special place that that dynamic is nurtured is in uh, true prayer as Christ meant it to be as we pray uh, we're meant to that that experience of prayer is meant to be a time of nurturing uh, more knowledge and experience and faith and belief and centeredness uh, on uh, God's affection for us. He is the reference point, um, and, and we are being shaped by Him in prayer, and our hearts being changed towards uh, His will and His ways and His word. And then in turn, we love God back and, and love others. So um, I did my best to uh, organize the passage by uh, drawing out uh, one bigger question and then three sub questions to help answer that bigger question and the bigger question was this uh, how does prayer nurture our affections uh, I think Jesus addresses that uh, in his teaching on prayer and the three sub questions were uh, first when you pray who are you adoring and I believe Jesus addresses this in verses 5 to 6 uh, the second question, when you pray, whose heart are you trying to change? And I think we see this in verses 7 to 13 as Jesus offers his model of prayer, uh, the Lord's Prayer. And then finally, we need to ask, when we pray, are you and I seeking to live out the gospel? And we see that in the last two verses, verses 14 to 15. Um, so, to especially help answer uh, the second question, but certainly uh, this image that I'm going to remind us of is related to all three questions, but especially the second. Uh, and it's so I offer you this image. Uh, just look at this image of these mountain climbers approaching a grand, beautiful mountain. Their goal is to traverse this mountain. Uh, and as they approach the base of the mountain, what needs to be the attitude of the mountain climbers? Should their attitude be uh, to expect the mountain to move for them, the mountain to adjust to them as the climbers? We know that the reality is that the mountain climbers must adjust and navigate and adjust step by step uh, with each crag, with each slope, with each crest. Of the mountain they need to adjust to the mountain this mountain that is grander than them that is more permanent than them stronger than them greater than them 
And prayer is, is similar to that. When we come to the Lord's Prayer, uh, one thing that I was uh, encouraged afresh by was just the God-centeredness of the Lord's Prayer. God is truly the reference point of the Lord's Prayer. And I hope as you study it tonight that, that you're deeply reminded of that. And I think one point of the Lord's Prayer is that our hearts continue to adjust to God. That our hearts continue to learn to trust God and His character, His attributes, uh, who He says He is. That we would adjust our attitudes, uh, our supplications, our longings um, in reference to God and, and how great He is. Um, so uh, I, I hope uh, your study is rich tonight as you go deeper into understanding uh, the purpose of prayer and, and un, maybe revisiting those three questions that I offered to organize uh, the sermon. When you pray, who are you adoring? When you pray, whose heart are you really trying to change? Uh, and when you pray, are you seeking to live out the gospel? Uh, maybe one quick note on that last question. We need to pay attention to the fact that Jesus, after teaching on his prayer, uh, he comes back to uh, re-emphasizing the whole notion of forgiving others as we have been forgiven. He repeats that point. It's part of the prayer, but then he takes pains to repeat that at the end of his teaching on prayer. And, and really that's about a test of whether we are truly living out the gospel and, and is our, our attention in, in seeking God to ask God to help us to continue to live out the gospel. So that said, uh, I want to give you a practical suggestion. Um, during your prayer time, at the uh, end of your time together, uh, why don't you try praying through the Lord's Prayer as a template for your prayer time today? Um, work through the Lord's Prayer, and uh, as you identify in your study some major themes and topics that Jesus uh, models as a template, Though certainly the Lord's Prayer is also a very specific type of prayer, we, we can pray that prayer uh, verbatim from our hearts. And it is a beautiful prayer that way as well. But yeah, so I suggest trying uh, working, try working through the Lord's Prayer as a template uh, for your prayer time today. And I hope that each uh, major theme or topic that Jesus teaches us in the Lord's Prayer can be a wonderful springboard uh, into uh, prayers based on those themes. Before I hand it over to your facilitator, just uh, two quick RSVP reminders. Uh, women, your new community breakfast is coming up this Saturday and you can RSVP by going to eventbrite.ca and searching women's new community breakfast uh, and the uh, correct event should pop up and you just click on that and then follow the instructions there to RSVP. And uh, on that RSVP page, there's also a link to sign up to uh, bring a dish for breakfast uh, if you are able to. Men, uh, RSVP is also open for us uh, for our new community breakfast. And it will be similar to last time. It will be a joint venture with the Quest Men's Ministry. And similarly, you can go to eventbrite.ca and in the search bar, uh, type in men's breakfast uh, and then the date, 2020.02.29, and the correct event will pop up. And then just click on that event, and it'll be pretty uh, user-friendly and self-explanatory how to register there. Okay? Uh, we'll have a wonderful study. God bless you. Bye.